K-State's fans. So last night, y'all chose Peyton Turner here. Edge out of Houston, and a lot of people did not really have a lot of knowledge about who he was and that's because you know when you look at the national media when it comes to draft profiles and scattering reports and everything typically you're only going to see the big names or the quitty pays and i know a lot of people like jok and, and, and players like that but a lot happened in the first round last night that led to peyton turner being selected by the new orleans saints i kind of want to cover all of this i want to say real quick if you want the full scattering report on who he is that is actually written up and available and it's on the patreon channel link down in the description below the scattering report is free to read if you want to check out any all 22 film which we'll see a couple clips in this video that i'll just throw up here but if you want to see several games of him that is also on the patreon channel so check out that link but let's start with how this actually happened i feel like that's really important because a lot of people are taking this in as like the saints didn't do anything they made no moves when the truth is peyton turner isn't who they wanted to select now Bear with me here. What they wanted to do was trade up into the top 10. And it's not like I'm the only one saying this. I said it yesterday, but you also had Diana Rossini, you had Adam Schefter, Nick Underhill, everybody pretty much confirming they wanted to trade into the top 10 for a corner. Now, if you remember from the Hudak Professional Podcast, I've told you for about two weeks, their primary name was JC Horn. That's somebody that they just absolutely wanted to have. And they tried to trade up for it. Now, there were other corners they were also very high on, and you see Sean Payton talking about that in the process. So what ends up happening is they try to trade up. They even are talking to Denver on the phone, and this was actually confirmed by Denver 9 News' Mike Kliss that they tried to trade up with Denver, and Denver wanted like an insane amount of capital. They wanted first and uh, first rounders in 2021 and 2022 and also looking at potentially second and third rounders on top of that so they wanted a king's ransom to pick them up and i'll throw up that report real quick just so you know i'm not lying to you so the saints wanted to move up and get their guys and they couldn't do it and then they had to just kind of let the draft fall as they may and i've also told you that because of everything that went on this year they only had a handful of guys with true first round grades that they just loved and wanted to go after there's still a lot of players that they like they liked you know jok they liked but they didn't love you know they they had other guys that like newsome that they liked but didn't love and newsome could have been because of injuries and that makes total sense so you end up with a selection of Peyton Turner here, which a lot of fans went, what the heck? And the initial reaction is that, hey, they drafted Marcus Davenport again. And there is a little bit of truth to that thought process, but a little bit of differenti a differentiating that needs to be done as well. What I want to start off with first is to talk about this weird knock of like Houston doesn't produce NFL caliber players, which is really weird. Like I've just seen that. So I want to hear that real quick. That's crazy. There's uh, as of last year in 2020, there were 17 players from the college of Houston who were playing in the NFL. And all of them were from, I think the earliest was 2012. And just from last year, I think you had like four Ed Oliver obviously is a huge one. But if you talk about just in general, who's been there from this program we got a lot of big names who've been in the league before and, and not just like going back 400 years there's some decent names and some decent picks and first rounds you know, we mentioned ed oliver we go back to uh willie jackson the third who's a corner for cincinnati and a starter also first round pick and actually if you go from 2017 to 2021 they have three first round picks now including you know uh, Peyton and then if you go back even further you've got dj hayden who got picked by the oakland now las vegas raiders so a lot of talent comes out of Houston. Sure, it's not Alabama or LSU or Ohio State, but this is a school that consistently produces NFL talent. Also, I know a lot of people have talked a lot about his production, and I talk about this in my scouting report, but you really have to take context. And this is why we talk about you never box score scout. You're going to look at it and say, hey, why does he only have 10 sacks his entire career? Well, several things happen. One, I think this is the most important thing, Remember that coming out of high school into the NFL, this guy was 215 pounds coming off an ACL injury as a senior in high school. So tears his ACL, is 215 pounds as a defensive end. And there were other teams like Texas and Kansas, other big teams looking at him. Injury happens, that all goes away. Houston's basically the only place he can go that gives him a decent offer. So he goes there, and then they're playing in an odd front. So what do they do? They ask him to bulk up. He ends up being 290 pounds, playing as a five-tech, four-inside shade type of an interior odd front lineman. Then, as a senior in 2020, they changed. Now they're more of an even front, and he's playing more outside as a six, seven, nine tech guy. So 
You've got extreme versatility here where he went up to 290, then back down to 270, starting at 215. So that plays into it. Then you take a look, and I think this is really important because a lot of people harp on the sack numbers. Remember that if you get three and a half sacks as an interior defender, that's pretty good, which he did. Then take into account that in five games as a senior, five, he got five sacks, including going against an all-American, very good tackle who will probably get drafted day two, Brady Christensen from BYU, going against the number two pick quarterback who's kind of mobile in Zach Wilson. Did very good against them. So it's not like this guy has not put out any good film. There's a lot of it. And if you check out the Patreon page, you'll see some of that tape. Also, I just want to remind you that Cameron Jordan, who's only had one year in his entire career where he had less than seven and a half sacks, that was his rookie year. He finished his pa his last two years in college with only 11 and a half sacks in 25 games. Peyton Turner, who only played five games last year because he had COVID and Houston only played eight games as a team. So in his last 17 games, he had nine and a half sacks or nine sacks versus 11. So, I mean, it's not like we're talking about a crazy difference in production here. Remember, the key to scouting is not box scores, it's traits. And that's what I want to get to here, talking about the traits between Peyton Turner and Marcus Davenport, because those are the two names that have been brought up the most. I'm going to show pieces of both of their draft reports. You can see that Peyton Turner, for me, had a second-round grade, and that Marcus Davenport had a third-round grade. I really feel like Davenport coming into the league was more of a developmental pick. He just had way more that had to be worked on. He had no pass rush plan. He played with a high pad level. He took false steps from a two-point stance, which is not something that Peyton Turner struggles with. So as being a developed player, Peyton Turner actually has a little bit on Marcus Davenport at when they got drafted. Now, y'all can use that to flame Davenport for being worth two first all you want. I'm not here for that. I'm simply saying that as a prospect, Peyton Turner actually provides a great deal, and it makes sense of why he got selected here. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, I've never heard him. He's number 95 on this random person on CBS's big board or something like that. You got to keep in mind. NFL teams do not base their big boards off what you see, off generalizations. You know, and that's what any big board that I create or you know, Chris Sims creates or Mel Kuyper creates, that's a generalized board based on what they think is just the good talent, drop by drop. But when it comes to actually fitting the team, this guy fits really well. And that's what you can see in these draft reports. If you like a Marcus Davenport, then you're going to really like, as a team, a Peyton Turner. Same type of idea, same type of potential traits. And even then, you talk about the injury history that a lot of people have brought up. If you see here on the list that I've got, it's not a real injury history. He missed two games in 2018 with a foot injury, did end up getting surgery on that, came back next year, played the entire season with broken fingers in his hand, played through it, which shows to competitive toughness. And then he missed games in 2020. He was a little nicked up, but mostly missed due to COVID. That's not really an injury history, unless you want to go way back to when he had an ACL tear in high school. But the dude's 22 years old now. We're really comparing that. And you know, we'll show some clips on the screen. You can see some really positive traits for him. One of the main things that I like is his athletic ability is a size. You see elite three cone and short shuttle times. And then that translates to that change of direction that you'll see when he's coming off the edge. Really good bend when he came down to 270, good ankle and hip flexion to make his name right as an outside rusher as well as an inside. And I loved his move set. And I talked another way that his difference is, you know, he didn't have a pass rush plan in college, really, just like Davenport did. But I think there's a difference of why. Because one thing you notice about Peyton Turner is as the game progresses, he seems to get better at against his opponent and develop versus opponent. So he doesn't really come in knowing how to, you know, layer this move, that move, that move, and then build to the fourth quarter. But what he does is he adjusts in game on what he's facing. And you saw him use techniques that, you know, uh, we see basic defensive ends in college use like the rip and the club and things like that. And then we also saw him, especially as a senior, use more advanced things like the ghost technique that Von Miller has made famous that other people use, but he, you know, Von Miller is somebody that you can really see excel with it using the long arm, using the bull rush, using a variety of moves. Still needs to learn how to stack those and build upon those for later in the game, but it does show that he can get there and that he understands how he needs to change and improve. The key to a pass rush plan is simply knowing how to format that before you go into it, but he shows the ability to learn on the fly. That's something that Davenport was still working on as a player in UTSA that Ed, that Peyton Turner, I keep wanting to say Ed Turner because of Ed Oliver, that Peyton Turner doesn't have that same problem with and that's something that he has shown that he's better at. 
And then just because people need to see this, remember a 9.74 RAS grade is what you had on Peyton Turner. You had a little bit lower grade for Davenport, but he still had an elite RAS. But let's look at the actual uh, mock draft. I like it because it puts up in a nice little you know, circle chart, which makes it really pretty. Look at Marcus Davenport versus Peyton's uh, mock draftable athletic scores. You can see from athletic scores alone how he puts himself into an elite position amongst his peers. And that is a reason that you're going to fall in love with him as a team at the end of the first. And I say this all the time. The end of the first round is literally the second round with a fifth year option. Almost nobody selected at pick 28 for any team has a first round grade. And that's okay. I think Gil Brandt said it best that picks 20 through 40 should be their own round because after you leave, there are no more blue chip or first round talents. Almost everybody has some form of development that must happen for them to be successful in the league. But as you can see with these scouting reports and these clips, you can see a lot of positive with him. And remember, if you want to see full details of all these things, hit up the Patreon link. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. Who dat? God bless. Remember, we'll be live later today covering the day two of the draft. And if you're watching this after the fact, well, hopefully you just enjoy learning a little bit about your new edge player in Peyton Turner, who also has a lot of experience sliding inside. So be interesting to see how the Saints utilize them. Who dat? God bless. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.